That's how I met you too, Keith. Did everybody see the balls on Craigslist? Yep. Or Ryan. Why would you ever do anything bad to him? He's such a treasure. He's literally a gem and like a specimen, Ryan Chittapong. Like people are going to study Ryan Chittapong like for thousands of years after he's, there's going to be like hieroglyphics of Ryan. (laughs) I'm working on mine this afternoon. (laughs) Dude, how do you think I've been spending quarantine? I've just been like scratching my walls, making hieroglyphics of all the people I, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> I totally. I have been drawing a lot more than I was cool. like in the former world. Really? I, I hope yeah. I'm not the only person who's like, oh, I got markers. Let's makes see. You, makes you feel any better. <laughs> I actually have been doing a little bit drawing myself, um, but I do also store my marijuana in oh I thought, wait i'm so innocent i thought it was really sand art no it is oh it, it like it was at one point now it's just a bunch of shitty uh it was it's coloring <laughs> and also marijuana right <laughs> you've That's probably hilarious. have you been like drawing at all gina or anything like that i haven't i am very unartistic. <laughs> like i truly <laughs> draw for the life of me i can't even draw a stick figure I get too depressed. I'm like, this looks bad. And, and then you're I so go unartistic. Write play and yet you've won like so many writing awards. When I actually looked up your bio, because there's like the Gina that I know, and there's like the Gina that dork. like has a shit ton of awards. Yeah, I don't I don't brag about my undergrad or grad experience. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. I mean, how can you? Because you were just like, is this is this it? Am I is yeah. this what I'm doing? The thing I say I learned the most at both of those institutions is how to fight like systems and structural systems. So like what usually wound up happening was that everybody hated me. Like all the Uh the tenured professors and shit, they like, they're like, Gina's arguing with us again. (laughs) Uh, Yo, I, I know lots of women that did that shit in high school. And I remember like in the inquire, there was this girl, Talia Schwartz and, she was always just like wanting to talk and be like, look, there's a different way of doing things and we should do them. And, you know, for a 16 year old to say that, that sounds like some annoying 16 year old shit, but like it actually wasn't when I think back about what she was saying and like what the choir needed to do. And she was like, and this is how I think we're going to help. And of course my choir teacher was was like a man and he was like, oh, here we go. He would look at me in that moment and be like, there she is going at it again and I'm like oh this is our connection just like straight up <laughs> straight up massage knee <laughs> is our yeah. connection uh, I love that you knew how to be loud in college you learned how to do that then but it or was, did it what have had you been doing that a lot all your life no no it, I had to learn how to do it in college but it was also a really interesting time because both and one of the other reasons like it's institutional why I don't talk about them but the other reason is in undergrad and grad I was in two separate abusive relationships and so Mm -hmm. I was like in the personal life I was like quiet and meek and I think that it I was better able to lash out at hierarchy and like institutional Mm -hmm. things because it was so separate you know now that I psychoanalyze myself (laughs) at those two different times because like the the private versus the public was so different but it's also like part of the reason I couldn't fully engage with like like parties and stuff like regular like shenanigans is because like I was completely isolated in these mm-hmm. other relationships other aspects so I mean it's ch- I write about it in my plays which is why I'm not shy or anything about talking about them so no need for <laughs> any type of <laughs> anything Although I do recognize everybody's a human and can react, however, but like that's actually it, now that I think back at it, I'm like I was so meek, but also so loud. Hello, Garlia. Hi, Garlia. Hello. Hi. So Yo, that's totally okay. Yeah. Yes, horizontal view. See, Garlia. <laughs> yeah, I was like, how did that happen? <laughs> What, I mean, was, what happened? Is that a special effect or did you just turn no, it's, something? No, I'm actually on my phone, right. but I, I'm, I have my light, lights here and then trying, just hooking up my headset. So I, you know, have all the 
Oh, You're so incredible. Great. You have like equipment. Yeah. All so I that I can be it. heard a little bit better. That's amazing. So now I have my uh, mic on. Yes. I make my um, life a lot easier when I edit this. I literally have this on a pile of clothes. <laughs> Yo, Love oh, it. Man. That's, that's how awesome. I used to film self tapes. That in is college. how, yeah. I would I my my that. I would let my laundry stack up and then throw like a solid thing on it so yeah. I can like stand my phone up and do self tapes. Love I didn't it. Have a tripod. Yeah, it's it's, oh, it's all funny. it's all about the view, guys. We know that, right? I'm on top <laughs> of three books, and I don't know. Is that like wise? Do I need a fourth book? No, I that's good. Actually, I would I would say that books are probably a better bet than laundry, but you know, I know I yes, I would say books are probably smarter. Love than that, it. But I would say books are are in any case better than laundry. Yes, I don't think books. It, books are I good. Agree. I do agree with that as a statement, as a rule. Yeah. Can I just say I was so nervous to do this because this is my first podcast back in a couple of weeks. I took like a break to give all my time to the 24 hour plays and shit. Yeah. And this has been so much fun already. We're only the 10 bath. minutes in to this <laughs> 60 minute session. And Love it. I, oh my gosh. I feel like I'm at a rave. I'm like, I'm totally here. I also You're look at like, a rave. Oh, yes, right. I look like yeah. I'm dressed for a rave. Yeah. I also had that moment where I was like um very eminently comfortable when i logged on and then 45 seconds later i was like oh and he's recording i should be interesting yeah. and now all my good content is forgotten honestly that is one thing i need to get into the welcome email but i figured like at least gina and will knew me so it was <laughs> yes, like yeah. they wouldn't sure. care or they'll like say something and then we'll do it again but um i assumed you would see it eventually <laughs> And honestly, the um, getting people when they don't realize they're being recorded is just far more interesting. Um, oh, wow. So I'm then I wasn't even on time. I mean, just great. <laughs> hey, we'll edit it. I could literally, I'm, yeah. the, I'm the suit. I'm the chef, there man. Go. I'm going to decide how this meal comes out. How it's going to be gonna medium rare. <laughs> right. Perfect. I just You're the whole restaurant. Them. That's what we want. <laughs> There's a major Z joke in there somewhere, but I couldn't find it. I'm sorry. So I'm going to introduce our first guest, Garlia Cornelia Jones. She is a producer, photographer, director, activist, mother, and she's the founding artistic director of Blackboard Plays, which I swear to God has literally produced only the dopest fucking plays I've seen in the past <laughs> two years. I When I think about my favorites, literally... Uh, Ain't No Mo. I didn't get to see it, but I read it because Jordan came on here two months ago. Oh, great. And he, um, I was just like, how the fuck did I miss this? And I was so upset about it, but I saw School Girls, uh, <laughs> excuse me, or the African Mean Girls play. That's that's right. Man, the the Jocelyn and Bio. Yep. And you are also a producer at Harlem Nine, which is this mm -hmm. amazing theater collective that's producing the event that you're here to promote. Uh, 48 <laughs> hours. Yes. Oh, wow. You guys have shirts? My God. Oh, yeah. We have That's tons amazing. of shirts. I'm just going to like angle this down a little bit. You see, this isn't the shirt. This yes. is a shirt from last year. Mm. Um, I actually just, I've been w wearing, so if you go to my Instagram, I've been posting all the shirts like every year. So I've been wearing a new shirt every day and I've just been wearing all my shirts. So when I just did my laundry, this camera is actually sitting on a pile of Harlem Nights shirts. <laughs> but, I, but we have so many m m more to go ar ar around. I actually love mer mer merchandise. And actually, oh. I'll sh so. Please. I oh my God, I already see the public sweatshirt on your, <laughs> yeah, on your so chair. You, yeah, so you see on my ch chair, I wrap. The, the public over here, Harlem Nine here. Um, I, in if I was actually in in my office closet, like behind here, it's like my my little office closet. But I changed my set, set setup recently. Sometimes it's it's too much to like be in that in, enclosed sp sp space, even though it's a little bit better for um sound. So apologies mm -hmm. there. But I have like a chain of pins, and so I have pins from like my reading series so blackboard has some 
pins that I have too. Again, I love mer merchandise. I and love then I me think, some merchandise. Mm -hmm. and so like this is like to show how much I love merchandise. This is from two thousand. <laughs> Six, six. It's what wow. I'm recalled. But this is an event that I produced in 2006 in Blue Bloomington, Indiana. And so this was, um, I believe I still own that website. I do. I think I link it to my website now. Um, I actually bought the URL and, last night. So. No, I, I mean, I'm, oh, well. Um, I have my own and, plans. Oh, I see. And so, <laughs> but this, this, this was an HIV AIDS benefit I produced in 2006 in Bloomington, Indiana. And so we were actually talking because we're like, uh, hopefully, you know, we'll have merch for, for Harlem Nine, like something I do every year um, is I'm always, I love being at the merch ta table. So there is a picture of me at the merch table with like the books and doing all the things and so that's something that like i really enjoy if it um, makes you feel any better i also have some merchandise i just spotted it while i was talking to you i love it's merchandise the only theater merchandise i have in uh it, it, it's the fleet theater <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh wow. wow yeah man uh because when i first uh joined the fleet and i had my first meeting i went down in their basement which wasn't even finished yet and I remember just seeing a bunch of people in a bunch of red hats mm. and they were all facing the stage. So I didn't see what was on the mm. red hats, but I mm. was terrified for like a good 30 seconds. I was like, did I, is this like some like all right theater company that mm. I joined, but you know, also red hats are cheap. I get it. Before, before Trump, I was interning. Oh, yeah. those out from the so I love that. Um, you are, um still trying to create theater all of you uh and that's sort of a common thread that you all have while you're here you all have events that you are producing this week that sort of are more or less aiming to to examine what like theater looks like right now when like we've had a couple of months to reflect on like all the mistakes we can make on zoom and like accepting what that is embracing them and then just sort of like adapting and uh that's why like i was so happy that you could do this with will steinberger and it's gina femia Thank and you. uh she uh yeah. wrote this amazing play that i'm gonna watch later this week that's coming up at the tanks online streaming service something i never thought i'd say a yeah. year ago this oh uh God. called cyber tank not even the cyber tank just cyber tank <laughs> Like, I love that branding, yo. I got shout out to Megan Finn. She um, she also did a panel for the 24 oh, hours cool. and um, oh, cool. she was just such a gem. Uh, and she's such a, a great sort of adaptable person. Uh, and that's directed by uh, my friend right over there, there. Will Steinberger. I don't know how the grids were. Yeah, no, I probably fucked it up. But there's, there's <laughs> no, no, no I... We'll find out uh, in post. Oh, we absolutely will. I'll look like a huge idiot. I'll be pointing at, at Gina, and everyone will be upset, confused, and sad. Maybe uh, everyone's yeah. around um, me. Yeah. I have someone um, below. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, right. I actually point in the one direction story. no one is. That's just my apartment. Um, oh my God. That's even scarier. You, so you are directing Meet You at the Galaxy Diner. Uh, yes. And that's going to be streaming from uh, August 21st and be on demand until the 27th. And Will is also the artistic director of Inversion Theater. And according to this, his website, he's also a dramaturg, which like has not been my experience with, with Will, but like everybody has- There like, you go. <laughs> I mean, Garly is a, a Renaissance woman. You know, I feel like everybody, everybody's like now a Zoom technician in some way, if you're Seriously. like trying to coexist. I should so. be a better it, Zoom technician. It is, what, it is what we have to be, right? That's what yeah. Oh yeah. I guess my first question for, all of you would be like what has surprised you most about how theater is changing we talked about this at the uh, pu public and then also with Har harlem nine it's something that we're talking about and that we've kind of become many product production co uh, co companies overnight and so that both is really cool and also takes us by surprise when we start to really flesh out 
what it means. Like, what does it mean to do a broadcast as opposed to the theater? What does it yeah. mean for ex excessive ability? Um, what does it mean for how we hear and how we see? Um, and so there's additional people that, you know, we don't have, we still have to think about things about if we're well lit, how we sound. But then we also have to think about things like, can people who, you know, just like with ASL, um, we have to think about, you know, cap captions but Absolutely. there's and it's not just 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 that it's it's the editing too i mean all of these things are new new things to and this. that's a choice isn't it you know what i mean yeah. like even to like make it uh, to edit it instead of make it a broadcast to broadcast right. the edit is that's like a right. totally different that's thing from like right. the action of just right. like you know let's give it our best shot we're gonna right. throw ourselves on Absolutely. zoom and right. like throw throw this shit on Streamyard yes. or throw this on OBS yes. and like see yes. what comes up, right? And and so it's just, but it's also like like I in the beginning of this I taught myself how to str stream on OBS and then for uh, mm -hmm. Pal because I'm I'm also I also uh, work with Pal I'm one of their chief reps and I'm working parents on artists stuff. advocacy coalition right league league, league. Yeah. No uh, pal. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, for m m Mother's Day, I that week I produced and then I edited this play and then I streamed it over the weekend. And like that was like, I was literally mm -hmm. through a throw, you know, in a way through a thrown in, but also like a train, 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 training for me. Like, okay, this is, let's just do it, do it. it. So it's also that thing of like, learning new, new new things to kind of push through fear, fear, fear of oh my gosh i don't okay this 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 is new okay if i mess this up it mess up it's just all of that stress you know i, I was a stage manager in the beginning of, of my career a little bit too so that you know kind of anticipation and you know that so okay okay for me but still it's just flexing new skill skill skills Absolutely. you know I, and like, i think that's what we're all doing i yeah. found myself also having to sometimes like perform in the broadcast that i am broadcasting and that is a that was like the wildest nightmare because for the actor it's like you're looking at the script and ideally like you're not looking at a script and like, uh, hey, you know what, I'll, I'll take that on the chin. But I was, and it, it was like, I had been the lead of this reading and I had been broadcasting in the background. And in order for me to be able to see the script while I was broadcasting, I had to put the broadcast to full screen and alt tab the entire time and not show my, um, my mouse. And my mouse had to be at the bottom of the screen. So it's like, you're figuring out all these different things to do and it's, it can be exhausting. Like, Will, when was your first uh, interaction with like coming back to directing uh, post-corona? There were videos and I, I mean video, not like filmic, like they were very basic, like they recorded and one was me with a series of drawings and also through a thing at the tank and this and then something else that I'm working on, um, which I should say, uh, this is co-produced by New Light Theater Project as this other video I'm doing. I mentioned that just because they've been so supportive, but Absolutely. so yeah, months I did sort of, I used none of these skills. And then recently, like I taught myself the last several weeks, uh, like Adobe Premiere and, and all that stuff. And that has been, been helpful. And like, I, I don't know, like why wasn't I learning new skills in previous years? Um, that's mortifying. <laughs> but uh -huh. um, yeah. uh, I, I guess in, in terms of, uh, like what, what I would consider like directing because the other videos were like really just me like on like the floor here like drawing or doing like silly stuff like this is the first like group of artists that I've uh am in, the, in, am in uh, a couple processes with so it's really like now for me but yeah like what Garlia said is totally correct it's like all about like these like for me at least like really scary new things the live stream uh, editing to an extent so I think um what's fun is um realizing like 
sort of what you and, and another group of artists are capable of just by the nature of sort of like practice collaboration and storytelling, um, like the relationship between a uh, director and actors like that, I think has a lot in common, but the whole, like for me, the whole like visual world, it's deeply, deeply different because even though like, I would say like, I would like to pride myself on being like a really visually minded director, like in terms of design and also like staging, but even, even that it just doesn't translate to film in which you need to recycle images, like all the, all the, all the, all the, all the time. So that mm -hmm. has been interesting and challenging. And I know like for, for Gina's really beautiful play that we're gonna work on, that's kind of why we chose uh, OBS to, to broadcast it to the world because it does work. Yeah, and I, and I can't, we have this amazing, amazing, pardon me, stage manager named Sarah Zarad, who is like in OBS uh, queen and, and, and our, our video projection designer is Mary Shout Ball, out to sound every fucking Zoom stage manager. Yeah, it's yeah. unreal, uh, yeah. That? Um, and Izmir and our, our sound designer, uh, Carson Junk, have, have, have done really awesome work. But we basically wanted just like this interface, and, and, and you all know, but a way to combine live feeds and pre-recorded stuff just so we could have like as much visual variety as possible. Um, and we, we're in like a one week process. It starts tomorrow. See you in the morning, Gina. Um, it and, starts uh, tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my but it's God. Gonna, it's going to be cool. Um, and like it's going to be a big, big learning process. But we're basically like you know, Ismir and I were talking, it's like sometimes, especially in like a, a such a truncated process, it's like, it's about just having new visual content. Yeah. And so that you can so like, give the eye something new, 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 rather than necessarily like, we don't, frankly, we don't need to go in and mm -hmm. um, create like the perfect Photoshop image for every single moment. We just need new things. We it's about how we've been trained mm -hmm. especially through commercials and television um in addition to even like hollywood style movies um that we need that visual um but you're right that it's so info. different from film because there's mm -hmm. like that that like intersection of we're accepting where we are but also we need to sort of embrace it you know uh yeah, one right. of the things that we talked about last week during these seminars is that like uh these like we did a viewpoints workshop. I did a viewpoints workshop in my room. I'm not going to lie. Like awesome. not, not the biggest fan of viewpoints because it always depends on who is running the workshop because I've had some horrible, uh, just terrible viewpoints workshops where it's like our circumstances have nothing to do with viewpoints. So it's, yeah. it's like, I understand why this would be helpful, but like the execution of it, I was just like, not about it, but this was great. This was wonderful because we literally, it opened up like our spaces and the architecture of our space. And uh, it, it just opened up a new light, uh, a renewed language uh, that we can use in our home. And I'm wondering for you, Gino, like, was this play written for this or is this something you've been working on? And like, you're, where does it stand in terms of the reality? Yeah. Um, sorry, the moment you asked me that, everything froze, but I think I got no, it. No, it, it, it actually totally worked <laughs> out. You like stuck the landing. Great. Um, so I, I had written this play in 2017, I think, some, a few years ago. And I, something I like to do with my work is just say that it like romantic relationships can exist in a variety of different ways. And this one happened to take place over AIM. And, and really giving it like, <laughs> I truly do believe that you can create a romantic relationship or a connection with somebody without needing to be in the same room as them. Like the, and it can be as valid as any other type of romantic relationship. And so that's what one of the impetuses for writing that play was. And I just like to, you know, kind of fuck with theater and be like, yeah, a, a play that takes place large where the two protagonists ever meet and take place over AIM can be done on a stage or as we think of like a physical theatrical state. And so when it was becoming apparent that theater was going to mean something very different for 2020, I, what, you know, I went into like full on panic grief mode because a lot of my work was disappearing before my eyes or as I knew it. But I also went into this moment of, well, if there are any plays that I want to be able to explore in a virtual space, it's this play because it 
takes place in a virtual space for a lot of it. And, and so I, and Will and I had been working on it. Um, He had directed a a table read of it the, in 2019. So, uh, you know, I was, I was kind of like, and I wanted to work with my people, you know, like that's been one of the actual joys of this time and being able to work on yes. things. The like have... institutions uh, are exactly. no longer running the gambit. Uh, yeah. And for me personally, I feel like I am thriving in a new way because I've never mm-hmm. gotten the validation that um, other actors have from institutions. It's just, it just hasn't happened to me yet. I don't know if it ever will, uh, but I, I'm, relieved to know that I don't have to care or yes. uh, that, that we don't need it. But you and that, have, like navigated a shit ton of institutions. You've, you've been all over the place. And I'm curious for, <laughs> for Garlia and, and um, Gina, how has, um, how has navigating institutions changed for you? And, you know, Garlia, you founded Blackboard. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the basis of creating your own spaces within the institution. Mm-hmm. You, you directed that Raisin in the Sun production with- Indiana, uh, yeah, I, I found it black. Oh, Kurt, Kurt, Kurt Curtin at Indiana. And then mm-hmm. I founded Blackboard when I was more, more of an adult. But oh, I, word. yeah, I, I don't want to cut you off, but when you, you started talking about instant, instant messenger, I wrote an elegy. <laughs> I wrote an elegy to AIM yes. a few years ago because I was so sad that AIM was um, gone. That's part <laughs> so, of what I'm happens literally. in the play. I just pulled up my like elegy to AIM. I and love so it. So it just makes me so happy because oh my God. Instant Messenger was like my life. Yes, me and, too. Like, and co- like, no, from eighth grade. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm older than I don't know if I'm no, older, no 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 I you are as young okay I thought you were really young that's like around my time when I was using AIM well so AIM for me was eighth grade to through college, through college. and so oh, yeah so it was just like I remember you know our screen names were like my best friend Betsy and I in elementary school like uh when we made our email because like email yeah. started. Like, email started when I was, like, eight. And so, like, there was a world before email, right? I remember it. (laughs) Yeah. I remember it. You too. Yeah, right? And so I was, like, eight. There was was no email. And, uh, but but we, like, my first email address was the, like, we both did this model of the 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 name of our kid. of our cat of our cat cats and then our house and a not number wow so so i was i was babe 55 because my cat's name was was a babe which was actually the nickname that my my grandfather used to call my oh. grandmother and then my friend was Jinx two two one because her cat name was J- Jingles and they called her Jinx. So anyway, that was just I like so that. my so my first aim I I'm pretty sure was Bay fifty five. And then I started like no, and then I used to, like Gar eight three three and all these things. But anyway, I love that. had some so very well. intense. Will, what was your username, young man? What was your aim username? <laughs> oh, that's right. Do you know what aim is? He can't hear you anywhere. It's crazy hello. to think about the kind of things that we were uh, on the internet as teenagers doing. Like oh, yeah. Omegle, that that shouldn't be a thing that, that teenagers is. should be on. What is That's that? Outrageous. What is that? Omegle <laughs> is like sort of a chat roulette kind of thing where like yeah. a bunch. I remember middle school. I would do it with my friends all the time. We'd be like clicking through and like you know sometimes you get what you get when you go in a chat room and sometimes like you just see some other weird shit. Sometimes just like a really handsome man, young man with a guitar who's like just sort of playing and like that's beautiful. And then like uh, other times there's other things. I just love that you've had this whole elegy to aim and hearing you talk yeah. about it, it's so funny because I remember, I think I very much I was like senior year of high school when Facebook, I guess it kind of moved from college people. Right. I have an older sister who well, I was, like, I'd heard I was, of it. I was the first group of Facebook. 
the booker because I went right. to Indi- oh Indiana. So my friend went to U of M. And so they had it first and then it came to Indiana. And then, and then I remember being like, okay, we're all on here. And then, and then when it started switching to like everybody else, it was like, other people can use this now. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> Right, because it migrated just like like camp a couple campuses. Through schools, time. that's yeah. right. What an innocent way to think about Facebook upon reflection. Really? Uh, I mean, <laughs> that's how it was a way for me to like spread can, can, campus of events. Right. Like I, right, I right. really feel like I've been doing all the same things, making a Facebook event since like 2004 <laughs> and sharing it with people. All, you know, like the, the same thing. The well, same Galia, thing, you, you, know? you tend to be very ahead of the curve with a lot of these things. <laughs> Will and Gina know this, but like Garlia has had a Patreon for like three years now, and Whoa, like wow. she's, you've been ahead of the curve. Talk about like developing that audience for yourself. Which it's it's been growing recently, but I um, yeah I I started on Patreon in two thousand seventeen, I believe. Um, I I I found it because uh, a friend of mine who had some cool. cool supported black, black blackboard in its, in its early days when we were at the cell still Kira sim, simmering kind of introduced me to it through um amanda a palmer and she's like you have to read this this book you know and i was at a time in my life where like i was trying i i knew that like th- other things were supposed to be happening for me right and i knew i was on this journey but i i definitely believe in things that i i don't see or the things i i don't under- understand right so i just didn't know where that was happening and so i do remember like here introducing me to this book and like the whole idea of pit patreon and i think i just heard about it too from a, from a, from another person so just like he hearing about this thing i i i didn't read him in his book but i listened to the audiobook which i think was much better because to hear her read it for i listened to it for like a, it just like every day i would just listen to that book and so to hear her read the, the book was just so much yeah. stuff. i feel um, the same um, way about uh leila saad uh because that's that's a reading i'm doing uh, right now her, uh, See, her I actually have the book, but it would probably be, would be great to hear. Her, her. Oh my God, hearing her voice. Uh, you know, it. the book is the book would be ideal to have at that at the time uh, I purchased it. Uh, it was just not available anywhere for very obvious reasons. J- just hearing her, n- not in in a you know sort of didactic way, in a very like diplomatic like mm. this is the way the world is. I'm talking this way because. Otherwise, you'll get scared and stop doing this. And if everybody spends yeah. their time in the tone of of Leila Saad, we would we would all be much better people. Yes. <laughs> so many things would be solved. Yes, quicker. yes. I, I did start to think about the idea of like what would my community uh, be, and so how to build it. And I always had a very big news low. A letter, and I'd always been really good at, you know, when when I meet people, you know, <laughs> having an email address, and I had built out a, a like I always had my website and all these things. So those are things I already had, had. So that was like a very easy way to start saying, hey, I'm gonna start doing this and trying to build a community this this way. How would you so so support? So mm-hmm. carry. Kara was my first so, uh, a paid patron and you always need like one person to kind of start you out because if you don't have that one if you don't have that one per- yeah. person then you know and so from there I think so, so, so slowly built and then I started thinking about what would I, I I offer people and you really have to think about you know it's not that you want to like what can you offer people bottom line I worked on building this community and it just it it took a time i now have 52 patrons as of yesterday nice. august 15th but that has taken three year, year, years you know yeah and absolutely. i've uh, and the m- more things i i have to do it's always ex- exciting but it also means i need a little bit more uh, more of a so support and like for me i'm really trying to build production Mm -hmm. brand brands here because because when i think about all the things i do it leans really heavily towards the 
marketing and it leads really heavily towards uh, brand, branding and PR. Mm -hmm. And that's like one end. And then there's also my producing end. And then I am a playwright. So there is that end too. Mm -hmm. And I feel like right now I'm doing a little, little bit of of all of them like I've you know I've been I've written for the 24-hour pl plays I've been producing a lot of the digital theater we obviously have this 48 hours situation happening so yeah. a lot lots of like producing you could say executive producing too like thinking about an overall vision and then working with it with a, a, a team to really pull it off all things I've always wanted to do so I think just by throwing myself into whatever it's helping me and then I I, I take my patrons on that a ride you know mm. I something I really enjoy about Amanda Palmer is that she's very honest she's very vulnerable about where she's at what's happening with 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 her mm -hmm. and so those are things like i am very honest with my pa pa patrons and i find that people aren't really in it for the real award awards all the t all the time or really <laughs> at all right. it's, it's the act really of patronage in, yeah people are really in That's it cool. for you you know like there are there are times i am behind i'm behind the moment and I, if i write a note so someone was like i don't care like you know it's and, and yeah. you know and it's not <laughs> and also isn't to say i don't honor and and respect the ex exchange because i really mm -hmm. enjoy like creating some of the things that I, I send and do, doing that and so mm -hmm. um yeah. and I do ha I do have something special I'm, I'm, I'm working on soon to like Ooh. just a gift all of uh, of them which is something I I wrote a long time a time ago that I'm like I'm just gonna do it do it you know I'm just gonna bite the bullet and kind of do this and share it with them first so like those are the type of things it's nice to have a community to, to do that with because like I get you know, there's something to doing it on the internet and there's something to doing it first within a little group and then on the internet. So yeah, that's kind of absolutely. that too. I like am still figuring out like this needs to grow like for three more months before I can start archiving what I've made so far. Yeah. And that is like actual things. Mm -hmm. Take it all off the internet and throw it into the Patreon. And it's like, yeah, you guys really love me. You'll you'll like accept me for who I was three months yes. ago when I didn't know what the fuck I was totally. doing and you'll, totally. and you'll yeah. pay for that. Yes. And when I had, you're, uh, you're going to be working with Rasha, um, Feather Kelly. Yes, in, we, in we have days. been. Yes. And, That's right. Well, uh, we, we already have been, so we've been working work. with them. So it's, so the festival is, is like, I'm going to push it through the stream at one time but then it's going to be a, sort of available for people the full time so we've yes. already worked with with them we worked with them in july like we this was done in july but edited and oh that's amazing <laughs> yeah. but like i had no idea what i was doing when i saw him i was like just so in awe he even said yes to like wanting to talk to me yeah and, like I, I just, I fangirled over him. It was like, I was literally like seeing Harry Styles. It's like, oh my goodness. If I was <laughs> a 14 year old in love with One Direction. And that's what that whole episode is. And it's like, wow. I have to, now that like I've at least evolved ever so slightly through uh, quarantine. Let's. I can take those baby pictures and actually use them to to my advantage. I also wanted to ask like Gina about the Homebound Theater Project because you did that with Jenna and yeah. uh, talk about that process of using your writing for like philanthropic purposes and like oh, networking yeah. and what that did for you. Oh yeah, I I would definitely say that it was mostly philanthropic over networking. Um, I actually my ideal is to be able to use my art for philanthropic efforts or like yeah. you know that's what my my dream is to be able to do um 
So I was asked, Katya McMullen is one of my dear friends, and she's the co-creator of the Homebound Theater Project with Jenna Warsham. And I was really thrilled to have been asked to write a monologue for, um, it, who uh, wound up being uh, one of my favorite uh, actors um, all, of all time. Paula is, uh, she plays princess. On Paula, Walking. she's extraordinary, yo. I yes. love her. Oh, and I was a huge fan of her as a playwright before this. So Katia was like, we're going to pair you with Paula. And I was like, princess from The Walking Dead. Um, <laughs> Because I'm a huge Walking Dead yeah, fan. She looks so. fucking sick on that show. Oh, yeah. When I think about, Thank did you. I ever tell you that she actually, well, those people, Jenna Worsham made me her AD on like a show that Katya wrote, Agnes. And like, oh, oh, yeah. that was my first time, yeah. like, sort of being involved in like the greater theater community outside of the flea in yeah. New York. Because I really just had that bubble and didn't know what the fuck. I was doing yeah. so I was just like I'll do anything to be involved in this show and they were like well you're like way too young to be in it and we cast somebody else so like if you want to be the AD that's fine and they were that's so great. good to me and yeah. Jenna like was she kept me in on everything uh that's awesome. I personally like my favorite musical artist ever is Janelle Monet. And uh, because uh, my friend Michael Monroe was involved right. in that show I got to meet Janelle Monet nice. and like uh, that was that whole situation was just so like overwhelmingly wonderful and positive and like a, you you watching a play develop is there's nothing better when like you just have that like bird's eye view of it uh yeah, sure. so I'm so happy to hear that like that went well because I, I oh, love yeah. those people that went yeah. incredibly well. Um, I just want to go back to your question about navigating institutions for a second. I just want to say that when this all began and people were like, is theater going to survive? Is theater going to survive? I was like, well, of course it's going to survive. It's the oldest art form in the whole entire world. And I'm also, in addition to having infiltrated some institutions, is what I like to, how I have positioned myself as, um, I'm much more, my heart is in indie theater, much, much more, um, because that's where the most exciting work gets done, in my opinion, and that's where the heart of art really gets to beat, because we're all doing it because we want to and need to do it, versus, I don't know, and we're able to call in the communities that mean something to us, versus creating art for an institution's subscribers, which is what the institution of theater does so well. And so I, it took me a minute to realize when people were saying, is theater going to survive? They were saying, is the institution of theater going to survive or the institutions that we, we know and want to be a part of? And so during this time, I've been able to reflect more deeply on whether or not I want to be part of theatrical mm. institutions, if I want to be a part of yeah. American theater, or if I want to create my own theater. Um, and because part of it also is like, why would I want to work on something if I can't bring my collaborators and my hearts along with me? Like, I want to work on theater with people who I love first and foremost, um, yeah. not I don't want to be randomly signed like Trip Coleman. I don't know who he is. <laughs> I truly couldn't, you know, and it, like I don't want to. I want to work with <laughs> yeah. my people. It's very um, specific. So it's yeah. in terms of, and so I do feel like one of the reasons I say I've infiltrated institutions is because my work pisses off the patriarchy a lot. And so even though I've been given some crumbs from time to time, I've never been served a full plate <laughs> and I think yeah. that that's something that I'm able to identify now that I'm away from it because it doesn't okay. it's not as there you know the theatrical institutions were able to bring along people who they want to invest in and in a lot of cases it wasn't me which is absolutely actually fine because I right. can still create what I want to create which is at the end of the day what I want to do and I have very specific audiences who I want to engage with. And theater is very cruel to them in a lot of ways. Um, really just is. one example being I'm a Brooklyn native and I've seen the way that 
New York City theater does not give a shit about outer borough theater at all. And mm. so when I'm telling stories about just one section of Brooklyn, I'm seeing them say, this is not worth to go on our stage because our audiences won't respond. And so that you're, you're telling me that you're not trying to engage audiences from the Yeah, but you see fucking Hollywood throw up Mo- Edward Norton's motherless Brooklyn. Like it's the next exactly. like godfather. Oh, spare me, yo. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I, th- I, th- I think that something that, you know, I, th- I think about is the fact that black and by pop pop artists have not really felt comfortable in institute <laughs> to 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 tuitions at all and so the 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 way that we have often uh, na- 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 navigated institutions has been i think as we hear a lot of these horror stories coming from we see you and 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 just people sharing their stories they 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 have been sharing how hard it has been right and so the way i navigate institutions was i just created my own spaces and i've been doing that since i was like 19 did team so i always just created my my own spaces at indiana university it was it was you know it was it was because there there were not spaces for um black and brown students in the theater right right and so that was that was a really important thing for me to do was um you know, to, to create black cur- curtains so that we would we would ha- have a space for, for for us. And then when I moved to <laughs> uh, New York, it was to create black bo- a bo- board so that black pl- 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 play play playwrights could have a home. Well, that's and- why Jordan literally created Ain't No Mo because he talked about that opening scene. And looking back at it, like. It, compared to like what we've seen in, in, since Ain't No Mo's even come out, like mm-hmm. it wasn't that divisive. But right. the opening scene, he's just like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Say, s- scream yeah. when you want to scream. Right. Act how you want to act. Because he's, as a black person, told me about the experience of not feeling comfortable in massive institutions that are just as like equal to the public and it's like you should be able to go to playwrights horizons and like you fucking holler for a strange loop without like a hesitation and i do yeah so it's like clearly you know there's bias there obviously yeah and so it it is um it's it's you know i i think the the way I navigated institutions was by create, creating my own. I've technically only been public for like 18 months, so, um, but I just have produced a lot there and really made, I think you could call it a splash or just been myself. Like I've been able to just be, be me there and I've been able to, na- to na- navigate things and just, I really respect a lot a lot of my uh, co- colleagues and I do enjoy the, the work I do and I do enjoy the, the uh, people I will, will, will work with and so that has been something that's been really exciting but I still at the same time know that there are um, things that need to change at the at the at the at the pub uh, public and at all it's in, 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 institute institutions and and that isn't a, a, a secret like i don't think anyone's right oh just curious so. about uh the public uh and about that production and much ado about nothing because i was the producer of that the, 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 the line producer of that one that that adds up that that timeline <laughs> i wanted to know like looking back at that now does that seem like some sort of weird fucking prophet or something that like showed up a year ago and was like <laughs> this is like they took they made a huge mansion dedicated to like one of the biggest like voting atrocities yeah in recent history and, yeah. and there's been a few so yes. it's just fascinating to me to, to see that like you know n- even the public is still having to like check itself right now in heart of like birthing one of 
the the great most epic productions of theater that's like come in 2019 but that year was crazy yeah know? i mean i it was it was i mean we we recently did because um M -M much ado is being re aired right now on P well it was it it, it re-aired friday on P pbs but you can watch it on the, a lot a, a, right. a lot line i think for a little bit a lot longer which is really cool because it gives people a chance to re-engage with with that whole produ production and i think you know just the power of black women throughout that entire show was something that was very powerful you know was was a, was a, was a, was a through a through line that the Ken, Ken, kenny was really trying to weave th throughout and so yeah. It was such an it was just just a really cool experience, but also felt like home. Was a question so someone asked me about how it felt to work on that, and because I've been focusing solely on black theater, of course, when I entered the, the public theater, that shifts a little bit. But I I'd always wanted to work at the public. I was an emerging writer, by finalist the year Ooh. before I was hired as a producer producer so like we'd been do, doing this strange like are you gonna accept me and what what are we gonna do here yeah. so we you know so when i when i got the job as a producer it was like all right all right great. i just want to say one thing on institutions but then we you and i might need to do an old-fashioned phone call because i am not so confident enough that i have not blocked off the rest of my day to work on meet you at the galaxy diner so that i feel not like a fool Aww. and my most insecure self at noon tomorrow. Go right um, ahead, Will. <laughs> but I'm, I know I'm, uh, but nobody thought I was fun. No one was under that um, illusion. <laughs> I just wanted to say, um, cause I think Garley and Gina are like super duper right in, in every respect that I think like the pandemic, it's in some ways is the only reality I remember right now, but the last few months have been spent for me thinking a lot about the kind of combined failures of institutions. And I think that there's this tension that like very important to me is the fact that if it's working an institution, a theatrical institution, and probably if I knew more, I could extend this to museums and cultural institutions generally that, that these theaters, these multi-million dollar theaters really at their best should be engaging audiences and communities. And that means in the five boroughs, that means new, um, new, new audiences and audiences that they have just been overlooking for, for their own, in their own failures. But, and that should be to their credit. They are capable of that. They have marketing staffs, they have community outreach staffs. They literally have professionals who can do this and resources. And that's the benefit of the institution. And the drawback I think is that they, they take a lot of money to run. So if you're an artist, you're realizing that to work at an institution, and I am speaking bigger, but, but say institutions with like several hundred thousand dollar budgets and higher. If you're an artist, you're like, cool, I want my work to be shared with audiences. That's all we want, right? But what I've been thinking about the last few months that has really, uh, I don't, I'm like past infuriated. That has exhausted me and bummed me out is just that, um, really what you're giving up is like, frankly, like your living wage to have these professionals market your work and they're not doing it. And, and I don't understand the incredible failure of our larger institutions to get um, supportive audiences, diverse audiences, audiences that represent the five boroughs in, its, in their totality to see our work. Um, and if it's not happening, then I think artists, we need to find, I know like, I feel like my personal mission and. I have like a complicated relationship with like everyone with like branding and like what's reality and what's how I speak about myself. But like what artists need to do is then find a way to access audiences on a, an individual and smaller basis because our institutions have failed us. And right now the only way that you really can um, sort of access audiences is if you have like a sort of like really pretty like phenomenal level of traditional and social media celebrity. And that's not true for the people that Garlia, Gina and I work with. And I'm very just excited about ways and hopeful about ways that sort of artists can eliminate the middleman. Because if these institutions mm -hmm. are not going to get audiences into the seats or into the touring seats or what have you, then all they're doing is taking away living wages from artists and it's not fair, it's not right, it is a horrible waste of resources. So I, I know that's a small soapbox, but I just don't see the, six, the, the institutions that are succeeding in getting audiences to the artists. What I see is kind of theft. 
you know, which is, dope, ex- dope. Which yeah. is why yeah. you have to be on Patreon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> truly. In this, you know, in this like, link, this in this okay. post, Star's board, yes, Patreon, in this post, please. you will see <laughs> links uh, to the links in the bio that have tickets to meet you at the Galaxy Diner. They'll mm-hmm. have links to Garlia's Patreon. Uh, They'll yeah. have links to. <laughs> Will Steinberger's Venmo. Really just everything you need to support. Can Venmo Inversion Theater. Yeah. Venmo Inversion Theater. Check it right there. Um, 48 hours. Don't forget, we start the stream on Thursday. We go till Monday. Four days. So cool. We start our prices at $10. So, you know, $10. And then people can give it what they can if they want a bum. But... You know, this is our first time doing it, so very thrilled and excited. All these y'all better fucking give everything. Got Larry Owens, Roger Feather Kelly, April we Mathis. Did. They got I, oh awesome. my god, wildebeest. We had a Amazing. great little. We had a great feature in the dime in the time. That great um, uh, section in the Times to Digital Stream guide on Friday, so that was exciting. We've been in Playbill, American Th- Theater, Broadway World, you know, so just so cool. really sh- sh- shout out to all the all the press accepting yes. when I send an email and just just, you know, really excited about us. Hell yeah. so Playbill yeah. is the bomb. American Theater, they're all, they're all great. They're all great. Yo, thank you all so much for being here today.